Welcome to Martin M. Caldwell Investigates. My name is Martin Caldwell, and this is part three of the Bruce Ivins anthrax story. So where does Admiral William Crow Jr. come in? On July 10, 1985, William Crow was nominated by President Ronald Reagan to serve as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He continued to serve as chairman of the Joint Chiefs through the Bush administration until 1989, when he retired from the Navy. He was the first chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to benefit from, from the Goldwater-Nichols Act of 1986, where he became, by statute, the principal military advisor to the President of the United States and the senior most officer in the entire military establishment across all the U.S. military branches. This gave him extraordinary influence, to say the least. According to Wikipedia, after retiring, Crow sat on the boards of Texaco, Merrill Lynch, Pfizer, Norfolk Southern Corporation, and General Dynamics. He also happened to serve on the board of Emergent Biosolutions, then Bioport same company that provided controversial anthrax vaccines to the U.S. military in the 1990s. That deal was approved by the Clinton administration, which Crow had a previous relationship with. Sidebar comment. There are many problems with the first vaccine, and it was investigated as possibly having being involved in Gulf War Syndrome. Part of the reason soldiers were forced to get the shots before deploying into the first Gulf War was because we had sold Saddam weaponized anthrax in the hope that he might use it on Iran. Military leaders suspected with good cause that he might use it against American troops. Furthermore, it was Bruce Ivins who found similarity between the chemical signatures of the Iraqi anthrax and that which was used in the mailings. While ABC briefly carried that story after the anthrax attacks, they later suppressed it and refused to divulge their sources to this day. Now bear with me. In Fadil Habri's June 30, 1999 testimony before the Subcommittee on National Security, Veterans Affairs, and International Relations of the House Committee on Government Reform, he stated that three companies currently hold voting equity in Bioport, Intervac LLC and Intervac Management LLC, which are both Maryland limited liability companies, and Michigan Biologic Products, Incorporated, a Michigan corporation. Intervac LLC is the controlling shareholder. Intervac LLC is owned by Admiral William J. Crow Jr. El Hebrew continues. My wife Nancy and me and INF Holdings NV, a Netherlands Antilles investment company owned by my father, Abraham El Hebrew, are also major shareholders. INF Holdings is an investment company in biotech corporations, which previously had invested in the management buyout of Porton Products Limited. Admiral Crow and I are the controlling members of Intervac LLC. Wikipedia contributor Suber says that while Fad El Hebri needed no financing to take over the state of Michigan Biologic Lab, he did need a frontman to reassure the military with respect to their anthrax contract. He already had the perfect frontman and former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral William J. Crow. Thus, Admiral Crow had a long history of involvement with the El Hebri family. At the time of his death, Crow owned 22.5% of Intervac shares, although he hadn't invested a penny of his own in the venture. In my next segment, I'll also dig deeper into the elder Bush's Carlisle group, who had invested heavily with Crow. Now get this. The Bin Laden Family Trust invested in Bioport at the advice of the Carlisle group, as they have in a myriad of other projects. They quickly divested themselves of their ownership stakes in Bioport after the Wall Street Journal briefly mentioned the close relationship between Carlisle and the Bin Ladens. Meanwhile, George H.W. Bush and the others continued to profit from Bioport. While it may look like the FDA was standing in the way of these vaccines all along, some estimates put the shortage created by the FDA bans as driving the price of the vaccines up thousands of dollars per ounce. The same amount of anthrax treatment, namely Cipro, that sells for $20 in India, now costs $690 in the U.S. Military preparedness increasingly becomes a for-profit activity. By June 2003, through an initiative launched by then-Defense Secretary Richard Cheney in 1992, Many government-run military support activities were being replaced by privatization and national entrepreneurs. These were the private military corporations that did and now do everything from training police in Croatia to handling Alabama air base logistics or even the extremely profitable restoration of recaptured oil fields. These contracts all amounted to millions upon millions for Carlisle, the Bin Laden family, the Bush family, Halliburton, Cheney, and a host of other players yet to be fully identified. 
So a lot of things about the anthrax mailings remain unclear. One thing we can be certain of is that despite his brilliant and tireless work, Bruce Ivins and his family didn't get to reap any of these rewards. Please email any questions and concerns to Martin M. Caldwell at yahoo.com. Thank you.